Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I thought I'd do a little sit down video for you all because I haven't actually sat down and chatted to you it's just like in a chill setting for a long time. It's always been activism, activism, hate comments, this and that. So I thought I'd just, you know, give you a little bit of update at where I'm at. And also I want to talk about something that happened at an event last weekend and I was at an event organized by the Animal Activist Australia. So it was a three, three day activist event and we did a lot of activism you, you would have seen if you've been following my videos and stuff like that. So first off, I've been going really well. This week has been quite a big week for me. I had a very big weekend in Melbourne and I didn't stop. I didn't stop. So I had a really big weekend in Melbourne, late nights, lots of filming, lots of activism, very worked up. And when I got back to Adelaide, I didn't stop. I didn't have a rest. I made videos, I kept making videos, two videos a day, uh, Facebook videos which take a lot of time and a lot of effort, responding to comments and it was just a very, very big week and it paid off, it really paid off. Sometimes you can go through a very hard week, you know, very hard week, putting in the effort, putting in the work, mental stress, you're putting in the physical exertion and sometimes at the detriment of your own health. but. It paid off and I'll tell you why, I got an email this morning from uh, Challenge22 and they said, they said that my link signed up 192 people. So 192 people trying veganism in one week. Now that is a big milestone for me, I haven't signed up that many people by myself and this doesn't include all the seeds I planted, the people that don't sign up. The effect that you have, the impact you have just can't be measured. But this is an okay type of measurement. I felt like wow, all that effort I put in all that physical exertion, that emotional exertion, you know, paid off. And that was the reward. You know, I don't know how many animals, that lives that has saved. I think it's like a thousand animals per person per year. If some of these stay on, on the vegan lifestyle, which if you do Challenge 22, the probability of you staying on the vegan lifestyle is a lot higher because all your questions have been answered. You have less excuses. They've showed you what to eat. You've, you know you can do it for 22 days. So it's an amazing resource, Challenge 22. Great, but that's not what this is about. It is kind of what it's about because of, I, of my emotional exertion had a payoff and this is what I want to talk about with you guys. As an activist, you're going to have moments that affect you profoundly and emotionally, especially if you're doing what us guys are doing, outreach on the streets, vigils, facing what the animals are going through, you know, bearing witness, uh, the amazing activists that go in and get footage uh, that are never, they're anonymous, they'll never be known. This can put a very heavy emotional burden on you. If you don't find a way to channel that, you're gonna self-destruct. It's gonna really affect you. It's gonna weigh you down and you're gonna feel helpless. Now, how do I help feelings of helplessness? I'll tell you something that happened. On the weekend, I, I did a, a vigil. It was sort of like a spontaneous vigil at a pig slaughterhouse. First thing I wanna get out of the way, people say that vigils don't work. Now, I've signed up 192 people to Challenge 22 this week. This vigil video went semi-viral, got 500,000 views, reached a million people, okay? A profound video that planted many seeds. Many seeds, okay? Now, this is the power of vigils, so that's that completely refuted, whoever wants to say that. But at this vigil, I, I had a very emotional reaction. Now that's not like me, usually I tell people to respond and don't react, which I'll get into too. But I had an emotional reaction because the police arrived and they wouldn't let us stop trucks anymore and they formed a line in front of us and I was frustrated. I was frustrated because the police weren't interested in making it safe for us. The police were interested in protecting the industry and stopping us from filming the pigs. Okay, that's all they were interested in. So it made me frustrated. And then the pigs started screaming really, really loud. Now, I don't know if the slaughterhouse workers were in there tormenting the pigs more because they, they knew protest was out the front, which uh, my friend Rob said to me, and I think that that might have been true because they stuck for this 15 minute period, they were screaming really, really desperately. Now, I had an emotional reaction and I, I vented that to the police. Um, if you watch the video, there's a YouTube version which I'll link down below and you should watch it like it hasn't had many views. Something happened where it got it, the view count got stopped. But I recommend you watch it and you see what actually happened. I vented it to the police and I was very worked up. I might not have shown it, but in my heart and in my, my body was very worked up. I had adrenaline, okay? It affected me a lot. So the next day, uh, I was doing outreach, okay? I was doing outreach with Anonymous. Something happened, someone walked past and they said something insensitive, right? And, they, and it was just stupid, like, he looked at the screens, talked to his mate and he said, and he yelled out to the activist, I just ate a salami stick. And he laughed and I didn't let him get away with it. Usually I would, usually, which I always 
would tell other activists, you know, respond to your emotion, don't react, knee jerk reaction, and always remain positive, calm, and logical. But this guy, I don't think he was gonna respond to that, and I didn't think of that anyway. I just walked up and I said, do you think that that's funny? I, th I did swear. I said, do you think what's on that screen is funny? And he said, yeah, no, no, no. He felt uncomfortable. And I said, what, have you got a dog? And he goes, yeah. And I said, how would you like if someone kicked your dog to death? Would you think that's funny? No, I love my dog. And I said, well, what makes you think that um, making fun of this animal cruelty is funny? He goes, what, do you like them? Do you care about them pigs? I said, yeah, they're my friends. And I said to him, grow up. It was a little bit more animated than that. I was swearing, I was worked up. And this guy, I don't know if he would have responded to Log logical, calm, Socratic que questioning anyway. But what I did to him is I, s I rattled him up a little bit and he won't forget that, I don't think. That's not the point of whether that type of activism is effective. I always adhere to, my, I, I try to as much as I can adhere to my calm, logical, polite, Socratic method. But I let my emotions get in the way, okay? Which is what I invite most activists to, to, to put to the side. Now, I kind of lost it there. But the thing is, I could have went to this vigil, been emotionally affected by it, not had no channel, just, just kept it in. But I channeled it and I, I vented to the police and I made a really good video that reached a lot of people. Now this guy who said something about the salami stick, I did get worked up, I did get worked up and I don't know if that was the best thing, but it happens, I'm letting you know that I'm human and, and this stuff happens. The main thing you need to know when you're having these emotional responses and you've worked your ass off and you, you, you feel really emotional and, and worked to the ground, you need to do something that rewards you. And this is what happened. I'm gonna leave you with a video of what happened after the vigil and it gave me a, f a sense of fulfillment. It's okay to get in these situations that make you feel sad, make you feel angry, but if you don't channel these feelings of sadness and anger and these feelings of helplessness into something positive, you're gonna burn out as an activist and you're not gonna be able to sustain yourself and I don't want anyone to, that, that to happen to anyone, okay? I want you to make sure that you, you grab these emotions and you channel them into some positive outreach where you convert someone to veganism or you inspire someone to be an activist and this is what's gonna help you long term. This guy, this interaction I'll post right now, it was some icing on the cake to a very emotional weekend and also the week that nearly broke me mentally. <laughs> I got 192 signups on my Challenge 22 link, which is just amazing. So many animals' lives saved. So thank you very much. This is my little update video, and I'll leave you with this. Okay, that's a dairy intro. You know what happens when they can't produce any more milk? Slaughter. Have a, oh, good guess, yeah. They get usually second grade hamburger meat because their bodies are just so run down. Right. Yeah, so they use them for second grade cuts. The egg industry, is uh, quite horrific too. So obviously uh, the males can't lay eggs. Yeah. So they separate them. Okay. The way, you know the males go? Happy farm where they get to live out their lives? No. They get macerated in a big blender on their first day of life usually. Right. Yeah. A baby chick can recognise their siblings nearly instantly when they're born. So imagine being separated from your brother or sister and then they're going into a macerator. Um, females. They lay eggs till they can't lay eggs anymore. Right. So they're usually forced to lay 300 eggs when usually that's about 15 to 20. Okay? When well, they can't lay eggs anymore, go to the slaughterhouse. Okay? Right. Horrific. And they learn from videos. Like if you show a video of a chicken eating out a red bowl, the chickens that watch it will eat not from the yellow bowl, but from the red bowl too. They learn from videos. They're really smart at a young age. Either way, even if they weren't intelligent, it's still wrong to do that to an animal that can't, that can feel pain and suffer. But they, the fact is, birds, these birds are intelligent. So are the calves, so are the cows. So, you're doing this to raise awareness? We are trying to get the public, which is you, to say, when you're at the supermarket, am I going to pay for them to go to these places? So by buying eggs, by buying milk, buying meat, you're saying, do this to animals for me, right. so I can eat them. Yeah. Without you, these industries don't exist. Yeah. So different meat substitutes, uh, coconut milk, rice milk, almond milk, we've got vegan cheese. We've got everything we need, yeah. vegan. Right. All right. Do a little bit of searching around, it's fine. The, the, the milk aisle has got 20 plant-based milks to choose from. Right. Almond milk, rice milk. If you don't like rice milk, try soy. If you don't like soy, try almond. But why do we have to take the babies? No. Why do we have to kill them for their milk? It's their mother's milk. So that's why we're here. We're just saying, hey, can you guys 
make a cruelty-free choice at the supermarket, they'll listen. Yeah. Less of these animals go to slaughter. But anyway, this is a card, right? Right. Seek the truth. Okay. A little bit of information on there, but on the back, type that in, and you can do a challenge. And then after 22 days, you'll be like, oh, I feel fantastic, I lost all this weight. Wow, I, I'm not contributing to this cruelty. I'm gonna continue doing it. Or you'll be like, oh, my hair fell out, I died of protein deficiency, um, I need my meat, whatever. But at least you tried, and you know that it's doable. Right and how unnecessary this really is, you'll realise. Vegan cheese might be a dollar or two more expensive, all right? But it doesn't have the pus, blood, cruelty, you know? And it feels good knowing, hey, you know, it's just cheese, you know? I'm making a good choice here. The burgers, you know, they might be five bucks for a packet of burgers, or some vegan hot dogs might be about seven bucks. They might be a bit, a bit expensive, but you can eat rice, beans, potatoes, um, dal, you know, curries. Chickpeas, all that stuff, bread. You can you can be cheap vegan too, mate. So cheap. And rice is the cheapest food per calorie on earth. And it's vegan. You know what I'm saying? So potatoes, cheapest cheapest foods on earth. Fruit and vegetable oil. But you know you can get all the good stuff too. If you want ice cream, get ice cream. Vegan. Vegan ice cream. So good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You down? <laughs> Sign up, bro. You just type that in. This is my direct link. So you all know how many people have signed up through that link. On you, mate. Yes, we got one. Peace.